Team, keep it clean. What's up, baby? What's going on? Now, we, of course, got another episode of Questions from Subs, but before we get into it, got to give some special, special shout out. Special shout out to my guy, Garrick, because he is the newest Team Keep It Clean patron. Uh, and if you, any of y'all would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingviz. And if not, that's okay. Now, also got to give a shout out to a couple of people who have deleted their uh, patron membership to Team Keep It Clean, which is fine. Which is fine. Because sometimes some people be like, man, I, I don't want to be a patron anymore. And that's fine. Look, I, I still got love for y'all. Trust me. I, I promise you I do. Um, but also, shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean channel members. Uh, my guy Lou, who came back. And, and STTB, baby! But I, I love y'all. I love all of y'all. I appreciate all of y'all. And again, same thing. Any Team Keep It Clean channel members that was like, ah, you know what? I don't think I want to be a channel member no more. That's fine. I appreciate any time that y'all spent as a channel member and, of course, as a Team Keep It Clean patron. I love y'all. Now, um, my guy, Manuel, uh, we, of course, have continued to talk about how I just, in my opinion, it's not looking too bright um, for Lamar as a Baltimore Raven in the future. Now, as I always say, I, I certainly, certainly, certainly hope to be completely wrong about that. I hope that we can come on here. Uh, come March or whenever and be like, man, <laughs> I was wrong. I was completely wrong about Lamar staying in the Ravens. They signed him to a big, fat, whopping contract, and he will be a Baltimore Raven for the foreseeable future. I can't even talk too much right now. It's, it's too early in the morning. But we'll see. But my guy Manuel, he said he got a plan. He got a plan how to make Lamar Jackson stay in Baltimore. So let's see what his plan is. He said, what's up, Engraver? Shout out from Mexico. I know we are all getting ready to say goodbye to Lamar from Baltimore, but if I was Bashadi, I would offer him the following of two. First, I would give him 300 mil fully guaranteed, pushing the money down the line to sign guys for him to repeat through a six-year contract. Mm. Now, um, I don't really think you can really push, <laughs> push money down the line with no 300 mil fully guaranteed. You ain't pushing nothing down the line because it's fully guaranteed. When it's not fully guaranteed, you could like do some things. You could move some stuff around and whatnot. But with it, be, with it being fully guaranteed, you, you have to pay it. Um, but uh, I don't know if they, if they could structure it in a way where different things kick in at different times and whatnot. I'm sure like they got the guys to do the the finagling and the jumping through hoops and all that stuff. I'm sure they do. Um, but it's, it's all about how it'll be structured. But anyway, that's one of his plans. He said, I would give him a 300 mil fully guaranteed, pushing the money down the line to sign guys for him to repeat through a six year contract. Uh, second one, and maybe it seems very unlikely, but still is possible. 200 mil fully guaranteed and three to five. Ooh, whoa. Now that's some. Oh, let me finish. I'm over here eating. And three to five percent ownership of the team, making him a minority owner of the Ravens while playing ball. Ooh, see now, now you you're really talking big money there. Like, cause again, the guarantees are nice. Guaranteed contracts, and that's still a lot. That's, that's a lot of money. That's a whole lot of money. A whole lot of money. But then you talk about partial ownership of the team. Ooh. Ooh, that's the real business right there. That's like, that's the serious stuff. Right? I mean, obviously contracts is serious for however much it's going to be, but partial ownership of the team, that's real right there. And if Steve Bashotti were to ever give Lamar partial ownership, now I wonder if he gave Lamar partial ownership, would that also come with partial decision making when it came to this, that, and the third and whatnot? Ooh, that is something right there. So I... I like how you think, because my guy Manuel is very business-minded. And he said, which one would you do? And if you choose none of these options, what would you do? Uh, he said, P.S. <laughs> he said, P.S. Lamar has to marry his girlfriend. That girl will save him a lot of PR disasters. I like that. That's funny, man. Um, I really appreciate y'all, man. I, I love y'all. I really do. I, I really do so much, man. We we have so much uh, fun conversations on here. We um we obviously talk a lot of Ravens and stuff like that. I know we're getting off subject and we're going to get to the question. But we talk a lot of Ravens on here, uh, just football, general, different stuff with the business side of football, with the game of football, all that and so on and so forth. And I'm no expert at any of that stuff. 
Uh, we just get on here, voice our opinion on whatever it may be, whether we like something, whether we dislike something, whatever it is, how, how we think stuff is going to go down, how we think stuff won't go down. But I appreciate y'all so much for being a part of it. I really, really, really do. Y'all make this thing so much fun, man. So much fun. And I, I, I really, really love y'all. Um, but which one would I do? Um, go now. I, mm, mm. That is tricky because the 300 mil fully guaranteed that like that's 300 mil fully guaranteed. Now this one, the second one, 200 mil fully guaranteed. I obviously still a lot of money now with that. Um, it could be a deal worth up to 300 mil, but what man, and, and it sounds so crazy talking about a contract worth that much money. Like, remember back when Flacco got his deal, it was six years, 120 mil, or worth up to 120 mil. And now we we having conversations about 250 mil fully guaranteed. We having conversations about 300 mil. Whew. But anyway, um, the 300 mil is I want my money and I want it all and I want it now, which is no problem with that. It's like, hey, you deserve it. But then that 200 mil is I still get a lot of money and you could structure a, a, a deal worth up to 300 mil. But there could be some incentives and whatnot, uh, and there could be some likely to reach incentives. There could be some unlikely to reach incentives. You know how these deals get done. But that ownership part, that that ownership part is serious. Now, three to five percent, um, that will still be Bashadi owning owning ninety five percent. I mean, he, I, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't want to uh, give up majority ownership, not at all. But um, if I took the two hundred mil fully guaranteed and then whatever else incentives came on that deal too i would want to push for maybe 15 20 percent ownership maybe even 25 because I, I just i would really want to push that because that is a um that's really a long-term thing that's really and and if you a part owner like yeah you you really got your i mean obviously if they pay you all that money you 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 definitely one of the big boys on the team you are the guy on the team um, but if you are part owner too, then you really are setting yourself up um, for a lot of long term success, income, residual income. And, and that that thing can just it could be a beautiful thing. So, I mean, either one would be nice. Um, but if it was me, I would probably go for that part ownership. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean again, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, where you can ask any question about the Ravens, about the NFL, whatever it may be. I love y'all, appreciate y'all. Let's get into this next question from my guy, a patron, my guy Raymond L. He said, hey, Raven, it's been a minute since I talked to you, uh, but I have to ask, what's going on with us and not getting our wide receivers uh, in, the, in, in the game early and when the other team knows we're going to throw the ball? And what's going on with Peters? Uh, he's been getting, uh, oh, he's been getting picked on lately and is looking a little bad. What can we do? Well, with Peters, you can just hope that um, things get better uh, as the season goes along. You can hope that he trusts himself more, trusts his body, um, and really gets his head back in the game more. As far as the receivers, uh, it's just about I, I think it will be really nice to um, get them involved in the short passing game a lot more. Too. Now, still, don't take away the deep passes. I know there's been trouble with them connecting with each other. Sometimes Lamar will overthrow. Sometimes they'll just start slowing up on the routes. Um, it's, it's, they've been off they, they all certainly been off The, the connection But get them Continue trying to deep ball Keep trying it But also uh, incorporating that short game too uh, He also said um, I'm from Baltimore uh, And we love our team here What's going on with us Oh Oh What's, what's going on with the What's going on with us Not getting our wide receivers And the gamblers Get them the ball early A little five yards and shots down the field. We are a good running team that's going to that's gonna be there for us. <clears throat> I'm starting to think it's time for Giro to go. Sad to say, but something has to happen. Hope you and the family are doing great. And hope to see you uh, in Baltimore soon for a home game. Love what you're doing. Keep up the good work. We support you here in Baltimore. Hey, I appreciate that. You know, I, I was just thinking about that uh, the other day. Um, well, yesterday, as a matter of fact. I was thinking like, man, when's the next time um, 
to go up there for for a game or even just go up there. Period. I I don't know, man. Um, I was also thinking about the the, the flag football. We ain't done the flag football since twenty nineteen. Yeah, we ain't done it since twenty nineteen. Um, so that would be fun to do that uh, at the end of summer. But we'll we'll, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the the Ravens just got to get them involved early. Um, and they got to they just got to build the chemistry. Um, Lamar, you got to be on point. Um, with the deep shots, and hey, if get get Deshaun Jackson out there earlier, that's what I would say. Get him out there earlier, cause he obviously still got the burners on him. So yeah, get him out there earlier, and just keep trying it. If it if just cause it doesn't work, just cause if Lamar overthrows it, or if the receiver, if they stop running, just cause it doesn't work the first time, don't stop trying. That would be my thing. Do not stop trying. Keep those defenses honest. Next question came from my guy Danell. He said, "Good evening, bro. Do you know?" Do you know Lamar? I ask because you told us he missed practice with an injury uh, to have a baby. Then I saw a beautiful newborn baby girl on his page, but the media hasn't picked up on that story at all. Well, he, he posted that, and then we talked about it in the video. Um, and he, he said it was his goddaughter. But as far as the media, um, you know how it goes with the media. Like, they, uh, they, they'll run with the bad stuff with Lamar. But the good stuff, it'll be like, oh, crickets. You won't hear about it. Next question came from my guy Gareth. Well, I guess more so a comment. He said, I just found out a really bad stat. We lead the league in drops. Shaking my head. Now, is it that we lead the league in drops or is it drop percentage? Because that does make a difference. I mean, both will be bad. But it does make a small difference. But, yeah, both both will be bad. Read between the roster. Next question came from my guy Julius. He said, Dan Graven, I said the situation back two months ago in the email I sent to you. Lamar's gone. It's sad, but yes, with Steve not being a hands-on owner and letting Eric and John just run amok uh, with trying to create this fantasy of bringing a new edge to the NFL, it's just a never-ending cycle. Think back, Troy Smith, Tyrod Taylor, really look at what they wanted. Joe Flacco stepped up uh, from back when he uh, went to the playoffs every f year in his first five seasons, uh, went to two AFC championship games and still uh, didn't pay him until after the Super Bowl. Think about it. And you think the Ravens are going to pay Lamar? Only thing that helped Joe was his agent, period. Now, on to the real problem. John has been deflecting the blame for a long time now. He's the same coach that let Tyler Huntley call the fourth down in the Green Bay game, and we didn't get it. He likes to pass the buck. Players love him because he's their friend. They need a coach. Look at the practice squad. Really look. Anthony Brown Jr. signed a two-year practice squad deal. Tyler Huntley has a one-year deal, and Lamar, no deal. All the talented wide receivers on the practice squad... Uh, gelling with Huntley and Brown You got Jackson and Robinson for Lamar They just let Shamar Bridges back when he should have been signed And been on the field with Lamar See the picture that's painted Let Roman and John walk Bring in Sean Payton as a head coach And Bobby Petrino as offensive coordinator That's the only way I see Lamar staying Just please let these fans know that Eric and John are to blame If and when Lamar walks Maybe this will show Steve that he needs to embody the spirit of Art Modell And realize that the Ravens symbolizes more than just a football team It actually gives us hope and a touch of brightness in a city that's so trouble. Your thoughts. Ooh, that was something. Um, and yeah, football, it, it does give people sort of that little escape uh, for a couple of hours every Sunday. Um, well, really all day, every Sunday, and then a couple of hours on Monday, Thursday, and then whenever else games are played and whatnot. Um, but with Lamar, um, I, ju I, just, I just hope for better. That's it. I, I, I just really hope for better. Um, like we talked about at the beginning of this video, I I, I hope that they can can work this out. I, I really, really, really do. That would just oh wow. That would that would if I, I just really hope that they do because that would burn that that would burn like the the city of Baltimore hearts would be broken, crushed, and just fans of the Ravens. And I think not even just fans of the Ravens, just fans of football. Period. Like, well, obviously, if, if he went to another team, their hearts wouldn't be crushed. But, oh, man, that would be something. Uh, there would be a lot of tears. It would be a lot of pain. Um, so, yeah, we could hope that something gets done. And, again, I, I still hope that things are different um, moving forward. I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, as far as Lamar... He said uh, he he said letting go of John Harbaugh and Greg Roman, and he said he feels like the only way Lamar will stay if uh, they hire Sean Payton as an offensive co I mean, excuse me, as a head coach and Bobby Petrino as an offensive coordinator. Um, I do think they they could really get the most out of Lamar, but I also think that um, if 
they were to bring in a new head coach, they're not. Um, but if they were to bring in a new head coach, then I think um, the franchise tag would be in play there. I mean, the franchise tag going to be in play regardless if Lamar stays or goes. But, well, unless they can come up with a deal. Unless they can come to an agreement. Hey. But, um, ah, uh, wow. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, I I don't know, man. I uh, it oh, but if if they if they did, if, they're not going to. But just speaking hypothetically, if they were to let Harbaugh go and Ray Roman go and all them, um, and they got a new coach, and they franchise tag Lamar in hopes to keep him, then I think that uh, I don't think he will sign a long term deal yet because I think he would really want to see how, how this new coach and offensive coordinator and all that how they got down before he signed a long term deal to remain with the team. I, I really think that he, uh, this is just me, but I, I really think, obviously, he wants money. He wants to get paid. I mean, who wouldn't want to get paid at that job? But I think he wants to win, too. I think he wants to see how a team is going to move uh, for him, um, how what, what they're going to do to supply him, uh, and they're, how they're going to build the roster for him. LJ and the fan. Not 105.7, but the fan from Twitter. Anyway, next question came from my guy, Amos. He said, hey, Tim, keep it clean. First, I want to say I love the channel. Uh, I'll pledge next week. Hey, if you can, cool. If you can't, cool. Don't don't worry about it. It's, it. I appreciate you just watching, man. So thank you. He said, I wanted to talk about the fan, and I understand that LJ had to apologize, and that shows good character, especially on LJ's part. But I hate how fans can attack celebrities and feel that a celebrity has to hold their tongue. Ooh, that is, man, that's what I talk about with, with social media. It's nice because it gives you access to people that you would probably never have access to. But it's also bad because it gives you access to people who you would never have access to. Um, and people can just be nasty. They can be really nasty. They can be disrespectful. Uh, it, it can be really ugly. There also can be a lot of good on there, too. People can be nice. People can be positive. People can be all that stuff. But it's a lot of nasty on there. Um, and it's tough. Celebrity or not, it's tough when somebody come at you, they, they disrespect you, they talk about how you don't deserve it. money, you, you need to be let go of your job. Um, and yeah, that's like, like think about that. Think if somebody told you, like, hey, your, your job does not need to give you a significant raise. You don't deserve a significant raise. Your job, they should let you just walk. And they should give that money to other people. And it's like, whoa, that's what? Yeah, that's, that'd be tough to hold your tongue there, man. It's, it's tough, but... Anyway, he said, now, if this fan was talking about LJ's field of play, then it would not be a problem, but you're talking about another man's money. A grown man at that, it is just something that you don't do in life. Talking about another man's money is one. Uh, he's not a true fan. LJ deserves to have the Ravens pay him by what is on his resume. That shows that they have faith in him. D Dak Prescott, Josh Allen, Deshaun uh, Watson, uh, Kyler Murray, and more... Uh, all the guys got paid and their resume is nothing compared to Lamar Jackson's. Well, Josh Allen this. Um Josh Allen done had some nice seasons. Uh so he, he got a nice resume too. Um But anyway, uh, I think I know what it is and I know it's a fact that LJ did all this without a number one wide receiver, so they feel like if they get him a number one, he will break more records than he is really going to break the bank without the number one, so they can keep LJ on a leash. But if he goes somewhere else and they invest in LJ, the Ravens will be kicking themselves. Oh, yeah, that's again, that's that's what we hope doesn't happen. And uh, I hope it I really hope it doesn't happen. Cause it, it kind of it, it kind of make you sad, man. Like like really thinking about the possibility, man. It really does. It it, it, ma it makes you really sad, man. Um. So hopefully it does not go down like that at all. And the Ravens be like, look, all right, we got we're good, giving LJ a deal, and we going significantly invest into the wide receivers too. I would be like, wow. Next question came from Hard Heavy. I, I like that. He said, hope all is well. The Jags game. In person, had me pulling my hair. On anyway, my question. I'm, I'm sorry, but I hope you still got some hair left after that Jacksonville game. He said, are you truly prepared for life without Lamar? Or how do you get prepared? Will you even allow your mind to go there? Last video, you made it clear he could be traded and his potential will never be reaching his offense. Oof. Now I see why you named yourself Heart Heavy. Um, no, I, I, uh, I would not be prepared for that. Um, I hope that that plan doesn't happen. 
Uh, but it's something that you got to think about because it's business. It's something that you have to think about. Whether you think it's going to happen or not, it's something that you have to think about because anything is possible till it ain't possible no more. Only way it's not possible anymore is once a deal gets done. We know obviously it's not going to happen during the season. Um, that's why come uh, February, after February, it'd be nice if the Ravens, they got a nice little trophy to show for, but we'll see. Uh, but after February, that's when... That's when this thing gonna really heat up. That's when it's really gonna heat up. We're really gonna um we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Uh but it's again, it's something that just gotta be on your mind. You don't wanna think about it, you don't want it to happen. We don't want it to happen. Um But anything is possible. So hopefully they can they can get it worked out. They can make something happen. Uh because we do not want to think about Raven's life. Uh, without Lamar, well, I know there are some people that that want that actually want him gone. Um, but not we. Everybody got their own their own opinions, which is fine. But no, <laughs> no, no, I don't want to think about that. But you got to think about it because it's it's a real possibility. In the numbers, next question came from Tamaris. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Hope all is well." Recently, I saw a video from Bobby Trossett. Hope I spelled that right. You didn't, but it's okay. I understood what you meant. You put Bobby Torsett, but shout out to Bobby. Anyway, he said, uh, that said the Ravens lead the league in drops. I believe this includes the drop fest in Jacksonville. Maybe they should uh, lay off the fried chicken before. Maybe they should lay off the fried chicken before the game because it makes their fingers greasy. Anyway, uh, after that, I wanted to look at the numbers. Lamar is 200 of 322 with seven interceptions. Add in the 21 drops and you have 94 incompletions thus far over 11 games. That is 8.5 per game. So 8.5 throws per game have been deflected by the defender and over or under throw from Lamar or a throwaway because no one is open and there are no run lanes. I count four of these a game. Uh, if I was to guess, that would mean two or three passes a game are off target on average. That being said, I still don't understand the slander he gets on his ability to pass because I would say that that is uh, – that is the average for most QBs unless they are just hitting three-yard drags, pop passes, and screens. <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny to me, uh, that wide receivers take to the house. Sorry if this is long, but I uh, just wanted to share my thoughts after I geeked out a little on, on some math. Keep doing what you're doing, and just like I hope Jiro will be soon, I'm out. Man, y'all be getting really creative with those I'm outs, but I appreciate them. I really do, man. Um, whew. Uh, the numbers kind of threw me off when you talked about the 8.5, but I guess you put in like all the incompletions mixed with the drops, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, the drops are one thing and uh, that's something that you, you hope not to have. You're going to have drops. Every quarterback is going to have drops, but you never, you never want to be the quarterback, uh, with all the drops that, that, but so that it just hurts stuff. It hurts stuff. And, um, it just makes stuff worse, bad, um, Makes your numbers look worse. Um, doesn't help come contract time. Because, you, you, I mean, you come to the table talking money, and they're going to be like, look at all those incompletions. And you could be like, hey, well, a lot of these were drops. And they're going to be like, hey, these are incompletions. Maybe you should have put it somewhere else. And it's like, well, what? But um, I don't know, man. It's The, the drops are never, never a good thing. Uh, they're going to happen. But, again, with the Ravens, um, with the passing game, and with like the limited opportunities and stuff, the drops hurt more a lot. Next question came from Noctifa. He said, Engraven, I hope this message finds you and your family well. It seems you were entertaining the idea Ravens may ship off Jackson. Why is he mostly referred to as Lamar while all other quarterbacks apart from Tua are called by their last name uh, in the spring? While I, I detest the idea and would rather see anyone else right up the very top goal, let us speculate a little. Well, the reason why he's called Lamar... Um, because that that's like when you're on that first name basis, that means you're doing something right. Lamar, LeBron. Well, you not even just first name, but when it's just one name. When they either call you by your first name or by your last name and that's it, you're doing something right. Like Lamar, LeBron, Shaq, Brady, Mahomes. Um, who else? It's more uh, Reed or Ed or well, Ray Ray, Suggs. My guy Josh Hoffman brought up a good point. He's like, well, what do we do with Haloti Nada? Because he, he got both. Like, you call him Lodi or you call him Nada because that. But anyway, you get the point. So anyway. Um, yes. I, as you said, I, I would detest that idea as well. Because I, I do not want Lamar to be gone at all. Not one bit. 
Um, but he said, let us speculate a little. Given the past deals for QBs like Stafford, Watson, Wilson, whom I all consider weaker than Jackson, what do you think Ravens' compensation could look like? And how gigantic, if even possible, would it have to be for you to consider it beneficial to the Ravens? Oh, it's, it's beneficial to the Ravens just keeping Lamar, period. Because it's Lamar Jackson. The, the number doesn't even matter. Like the, if Whatever you could do to keep Lamar Jackson... The number, in my opinion, it doesn't matter because it's beneficial regardless. Because it's him. It's him. So, it, and it's, it's, I think it's so important that Ravens realize who he is, what he is for them. And, like, again, because they haven't even reached the, 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 the potential with him, man. They haven't even reached it. They haven't even reached it. So, I, in order to really get to that potential, I think some things would have to significantly change. Um, and Ravens would really, they would really have to change. If they, got, if they would ever, if they were ever to reach Lamar Jackson full potential, they would just need a, 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 not even a culture shift, but they would just, yeah, maybe a culture shift. And not saying they have a bad culture now, but the way that they are, it would just have to be different. Like, cause again, they they very they they build on defense. They pride themselves on defense. Obviously, so that's that's what helped them in their first Super Bowl. That really put the stamp on the Ravens back then. And then in the second Super Bowl, the defense was not locked down at all. They were opportunistic. They were playmaking defense and the offense. They helped out a lot, obviously. Um, but you, you you gotta do more on offense for the offense to the offense. You gotta do more. Um, oh, he said, keep up the great work and don't let the Ravens be in the same old. <laughs> he said, keep up the great work and don't let the Ravens be in the same old Ravens get you down. Oh, no, no, no. We're we good, man. We, 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 we good. I, I, I appreciate that. We're we good, though, man. Uh, Ravens just, when, when, it's like when, when, you, when you love somebody, like uh, when, you, when you love somebody, I, I, in my opinion, I think that you should always be honest with them. You got to have the tough conversations. You got to have the real conversations. If they doing something that's great, hey, let them know. Hey, that's great. I love that for you. I love that you're doing that. That's amazing. If they doing something that you don't agree with, hey, I don't think that's the best option. I don't think that that's really good. You got to have the good and the bad conversation. That's, that's what it is with the Ravens. It's all love. It's all love. Um, we enjoy talking about them. Uh, we enjoy, I mean, obviously we enjoy it. This is, this is our job. But um, it's, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's all love. We, we, we're good, man. I've been loving y'all questions, by the way. Next question came from my guy, David. He said, hey, what's up, Engraven? This is Navar. I've been rocking with you and team. Keep it clean daily for a few years now. But this is my first time sending a question. Sorry if this is long, but I wanted to get you and team Keep It Clean's thoughts. Number one, way back when. Oh, oh, and the question is titled, this is what you wanted to build. Number one, way back when, in 2007, the Ravens drafted Troy Smith. I feel as an organization, this is the starting point for the Ravens' infatuations with the idea of a running quarterback. They will use Smith a lot for third and short situations. This theory is further supported in 2011 when they drafted Tyrod Taylor and used him in much of the same fashion. Fast forward a year and the Ravens beat their current OC in the Super Bowl, the opposite of if you can't beat... <laughs> He said the opposite of if you can't beat him, join him. <laughs> and then he put the little rolling eyes emoji. The Lombardi stopped their itch for a running quarterback for a few years until 2017 when a couple of losing seasons and Giro joining the staff reignites it. Into the 2018 draft and Lamar Jackson, a generational talent at the quarterback position, the speed of Michael Vick with the shiftiness of Barry Sanders and an arm to boot. The football gods hand you the play of your dreams. The one you've been hoping for for the last 12 years, and this is what you do with them? No proven receivers to help your young quarterback. You ride the greatest rushing offense of all time to a first-round bye in 2019, then proceed to throw the ball 59 times in a loss. Stale plays that come in late, so he has no time to make adjustments. Then you don't even pay him what he's worth because you waited too long and feel the asking price for the most important position in American sports. Is too high. I'm a big believer in the concept of stewardship. Those who are poor stewards over blessings shouldn't be surprised when the blessings run dry. Oh my goodness. Mm. And yeah, you took it back. Detroit Smith, yeah. Tyrod Taylor, yeah. Um, RG3, Robert Griffin, yeah. And I even remember that they didn't even get RG3 when they wanted to get RG3. Cause they want to get RG three, I think the year before they signed him. But he was like, "No, I, I ain't ready yet." 
they were thinking about Colin Kaepernick too. Y'all remember that? But then all the other stuff happened, and that that didn't go down. So yeah, man, the Ravens they they have been trying to get this 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 running QB for a minute, and um, they got them. I mean, they got a couple of them, but they got a more like a special one, a quarterback that can also run. And um, yeah, they they definitely maximize those running abilities, but the pass ones, no, man. So, I uh, yeah, that 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 last line that you put though, man. Those who are poor stewards over blessings shouldn't be surprised when the blessings run dry. Ah, that was a, that was a tough one right there, man. That that's a tough one right there. Um, so yeah, this offseason we we gonna see how the Ravens handle it, man. Uh, we gonna see how they handle it as far as money, as far as uh talent, as far as just everything. Um, this offseason is, is just so big like you got some significant guys that are going to be free agents you got ben grubbs i know people probably oh, ben grubbs that's a good, significant ben grubbs uh but I, I i don't think they're gonna resign him um but like three guys stand out to me the most uh one of them uh marcus peters marcus peters is a free agent and it seems like the ravens it seems like i've been, I've been like all right they ain't gonna resign him but they keep they, they they drop these articles they they link these articles and late for work and stuff so it almost seems like they sort of doing a Jimmy Smith type of thing where they um they they letting you know like you can see that the the player is struggling and whatnot um but there's a lot of love for that player and I mean who wouldn't love Marcus Peters uh, especially that 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 attitude that he got um but it seemed like they they sort of letting us know like hey they, we got a lot of love for Marcus Peters so. Maybe it's a possibility that they do uh, the Jimmy Smith treatment where they like, hey, go explore the market. Go see what it's looking like. And we, we can get you on a little on a one year deal if you want to come back and see how you are a year removed from your uh, ACL. Um, so uh, let's see. But um, that's one of the big names. And then Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith. So what's going to happen with him? I, I do believe that Ravens will definitely resign him, though. But what's going to happen with him? That's another one. And then, obviously, uh, Lamar Jackson, too. So, yeah, <laughs> a lot of blessings. Let's, uh, let's hope that they don't run dry. Best worst coach team. Next question came from my guy, Kevin. He said, the Ravens are the best worst coach team. Have you noticed how many new plays the Ravens run in the red zone? Why not take all of your red zone plays you scored on since 2019 and try those third or four downs until someone stops it? Shaking my head. Greg Roman will call an amazing play in three. Shaking my head plays. He never plays off the last play. He never gives all of his offensive players at least one touch a game. Imagine this. If you're not going to give Lamar a number one wide receiver weapon, then at least um, do the offense by, oh, committee. Uh, Mark, Ed Mark Andrews. Oh, oh, you put Mark and Gus Edwards together. Okay, I, th I believe. No, no, no. Okay. Cause you put you put Mark Edwards, yeah, that that like confused me. But I do see Gus's name later on on the list, so I think you meant Mark Andrews. So all right, Mark Andrews at least seven touches a game. Duvernay at least five touches a game. Proche at least three touches. Wallace at least three touches. Robinson at least five touches. The the Sean Jackson at least three touches deep. LOL. Gus Edwards at least eight. J.K. at least eleven. Drake at least seven. Hill at least five. Likely at least seven. Use everybody. Now, that's very tricky because it, you you can't go into a game being like all right. This guy going to have five touches. He's going to have four. He's going to have six. He's going to have two. He's going to have three. I don't think you can do that because different games dictate how you use different players and, and, and different defenses, they, they will dictate how you play and whatnot. Um, I do think playmakers need to get the ball, and, and especially you need to build off of what's working and what's happening, and also while trying to incorporate other guys too. Um, I would say uh, they should have like some design plays. Obviously, Mark Andrews, we know he's going to get his. He's going to get his opportunities every single game. That's a given. Um, but, like, guys like Duvernay um, with some screens. And I, I guess that is sort of kind of the same thing you're saying. But I, I think it all just depends on what's working. Like, what's working in the game? What's the defenses? What are they good at? What are they good at defending? But what are they bad at defending? What are they struggling with to defend? And let's capitalize on that. So it all just depends. It's on a game-by-game -game basis. Ravens future uncertain. But this is certainly the last question on this episode of Questions from Subs. Uh, and then I will see you all late. 
uh, in the game tomorrow for the stream. I love y'all. Oh, I will. we might actually have a video tomorrow morning, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, it came from my guy, Ken Patchy. He said, how's it going, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing well. With everything that's been going on with G-Rose, possible Stanford job, and the Ravens seemingly not trying to open the bank for an actual receiving core for our beloved QB1, Lamar Jackson, uh, I can't help but start to think about the, the, what the Ravens' future is going to look like without Giro or Lamar. It seems to me like Baltimore is doing the absolute minimum in order to make Lamar sh struggle so they can pay him less. But I don't think the front office understands how much of a high demand Lamar Jackson is. No team has expressed any immediate interest in him, and we haven't heard any rumors pertaining to that. However... I think this is because every team that wants Lamar is waiting to see that final offer from the Ravens as sort of a cheat sheet on how they can acquire Lamar in the offseason. This scares me, but seeing Lamar's career possibly die in Baltimore scares me more. Mm. Your thoughts? Um, yeah, we, 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 we're definitely not going to hear anything about any other teams right now because Lamar's a Raven, um, and no, nobody knows uh, the, well, these other teams, they don't know what's going to happen with Lamar Jackson. They don't know what's going to go down with, between him and the Ravens. They, they just don't know. I don't even know if the Ravens know right now. Oh, but you did say Ravens future uncertain. Uh, so that was the title of your uh, your question. But yeah, I just there there is a lot of uncertainty right now. Um, a lot of stuff is up in the air. But you're not gonna hear about any other teams because because of that. Because it's the season. Ain't no deal happening right now. The earliest that it's gonna happen would be uh, February. Because uh, that's well, hopefully the Ravens season would be ending. In February on a high note uh, But we'll see um, But yeah So it ain't gonna be like Oh the Falcons are interested in Lamar Jackson If something happens Or the Jets are interested We're not gonna hear anything like that right now If he got placed on a franchise tag Then that's when all them rumors will start to fly That's when you're gonna start hearing everything If the Ravens can't come to an agreement with Lamar They put him on a franchise tag That's when all of that stuff will be going down at, right after that That's when you're going to start hearing Everything um, Ravens the Ravens they, they can't mess this up man I mean they can The possibility is there But They can't mess this up Like as in They, 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 they shouldn't mess this up They don't They don't need to mess this up They, they I, I really hope that they don't They don't I, I really hope that they get it together man I, I really hope man I really do. I really, really do. Because you just... You don't want it to go down like that, man. Um, but yeah, you mentioned... Uh, the other teams, they waiting on the final offer that Lamar gets. A sort of a cheat sheet on how they can get him. Because, they, yeah, they're, like, there will be other teams that would be willing to pay more than the Ravens. Like, yeah. There would be. Um, and like, yeah, cause, cause these, and these teams know like business wise, Lamar, amazing for business. Instant boom, instant boost right away. Right? Cause that's what the team's about first and foremost. They're about the business. Cause it's a business. But they acquire Lamar Jackson. Man. But Ravens, it's important that Ravens realize that they have him already. So let's keep him for the long haul. Yeah.